Lisa, you've done some incredible work tackling the abuse faced by women in public and uh, political life. What advice do you have for young women who want to become leaders or even MPs like yourself? Absolutely. I think you have to speak out against abuse, um, build your support network and make sure that you maintain your voice. You, you have to have a voice um, that speaks to people um, because that's what bullies want you to do. They want to silence you, um, make sure that you overcome that. And uh, I couldn't have done that without my fantastic support network and my family behind me. Um, so building that support network enables you to show leadership uh, in, in the face of, of the trauma and abuse that, that members of parliament and other people in public life do suffer. But you know, it can be such a force for good as well. So to always bear that in mind as well um, and take a very balanced approach. And do you need to have a cause, a particular passion for something? Yeah, well that's been so helpful for me, I have to say. I, I, I'm not a career politician as such, so I came from a National Health Service background. I was over 20 years working as a psychologist. So mental health and disability have been uh, my passion throughout my whole life and that's what I've carried on into Parliament with me. But it helps to have a passion about something. I think so, absolutely. Absolutely, a passion that you've worked at, a passion um, for connecting with people in relation to, um, I feel that, that we work with people who have, you know, are maybe the most vulnerable in society. And you're using, with such a privileged position, you're able to use your voice uh, to magnify their concerns to government, which is, is an absolute honour to do that. Covid, of course, is one of the big crises that we've faced in this country. What did you learn from that about how you put the case for people in need during a major crisis? Absolutely. I, I think COVID has really, um, it, I mean, it, it shook the whole world internationally. What it's taught me is that from the grassroots up, we can build a fantastic foundation. So lots of local organisations also spurned into to action and built upon their success, um, making sure that you highlight uh, those who are perhaps being left behind, those who don't have access to appropriate supports. We had a real focus on mental health for first, uh, first line responders or key workers. Um, clapping's great and we've all got behind that, but we also need to remember the well-being of those who have been at the front line and we had a very successful campaign on that right throughout COVID. You've done a lot of work with disability. How do you think Parliament could do more to make politics more accessible for disabled people? To know that's just been such a passion. Um, since I came to Parliament in 2015, we started with the Speaker's Internship Programme to offer internships to people with disabilities right across the party, um, paid positions to gain experience, to, to overcome that challenge of even getting in the door that people find difficult. And now we've expanded it. Um, we've signed up 24% uh, of MPs to offer work experience placements under the Disability Confidence Scheme. So that's gone up from 11% to 24% even during COVID. And uh, as soon as uh, we're able to do so, we'll be building on that further. I want to get up to 50% of MPs so that we're levelling up opportunities for people with disabilities right across the United Kingdom and no matter which constituency you live in you can you can gain some experience and link with your MP. And in general terms what is the secret of engaging with the people that you represent that will often be very diverse in all kinds of ways? Absolutely, listening I think, empathy um, and you know remembering where you come from. I come from my constituency, I'm very proud to represent East Kilbride, Straven and Les Mahago. Um, to be their MP is you know one of the greatest privileges in my life. Um, but always remember where you've come from, your family background and, and make sure that you, you help people at all levels of society. You're there to represent people um, and not yourself and, and do your job for others in Parliament and I think that's a key message. Great, Lisa, thanks very much indeed. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.